In this tutorial we'll learn about Storyline's motion path animations. With them you can move objects around the slide. They can be triggered by the timeline or they can be triggered by a different action. Here's a good example of a triggered animation. We have stairs that go up or down and I can move the shape up the stairs or down the stairs based on some decisions. So I click and that triggers the motion path. I click again, that triggers the motion path. You'll notice that the animation started where the last animation completed and I can go in the opposite direction. Let's go ahead and look at motion path animations and then we'll do a couple of practice activities. We'll start with a blank slide and let's insert a shape. To apply a motion path you just select your shape, go to Animations and here's your motion path. We click on that and you notice that you have a few choices. We'll choose lines and now I can see I have a motion path. Let's preview this. You can see that the animation started automatically. And the reason it started automatically is because when you first create a motion path, Storyline has the animation triggered based on when the object appears on the timeline. So if we look at the trigger panel, you'll notice there's a move trigger. So it's move rectangle 1, which we have here, on line motion path 1, which we have here, when the timeline starts. So when this object appears on the timeline, that triggers the animation. Let's look at some of the other options we have with motion paths. When I click on the motion path, you'll notice I get a little ghosted image. So that shows me the beginning and the end point of the animation and I can click and drag this around and set it in its right spot. The other thing is when I select this object, I can come up to add motion path and I can add a second motion path. So objects can have multiple motion paths and then you would just use your triggers over here to determine when you use that motion path. You'll notice up here you also have some other options. So you can change the duration. There's some path options. So you can change the direction. You can lock or unlock. You can change the easing so you can have a nice smooth in and out points. Change the speed. You can reverse the path of the animation and you can also create a relative start point. And that's how that heart animation was created. So the relative start point means that the animation is always going to start relative to the previous animation. Let's go ahead and do a couple practice activities so you can see how the motion paths work. In this activity we're going to learn how to create motion path animations that are timed to the timeline. So what we're going to do is have these books start from here and then fly into their shelves. So what we'll need to do is set up the animation first. So let's just go ahead and hide this big white book. So we're going to hide that so it doesn't interfere with what we're doing. We're going to take this book and we're going to move it over here and we're going to take this book and move it on top of that. So the first book we want to work on is the manager book. This right here is the employee book so we'll hide that. So we have our manager book and let's go ahead and add a motion path. So we're going to go to Add Motion Path. I'm going to choose this Turns Motion Path. So now I can see my motion path and I also see my ghosted image. So I'm just going to put this in position. And this right here looks good enough to me. So we're happy with that. Let's preview this. And I can see the motion path works. Now let's close that. And we're going to go ahead and apply that motion path to the next shape. Now here's a shortcut in Storyline is we have this animation painter. So I'm going to select this shape here. I'm going to double click. That keeps the animation painter intact. Now I'm going to show the other book and I'm going to paste the animation on here. And now the second book also has the animation. So we're going to select the motion path here and I can see it and I just need to put it in its proper spot. And that looks good enough to me. Let's preview this. And I can see the motion paths are working. But what I want to do is I want to change the timing of them. So I want them to stagger in. So I want the blue book to come in and then I want the orange book to come in. So let's go ahead and close that. Now to stagger them, I need to look at the timeline. So what happens is the animation is triggered based on this object appearing on the timeline. What I could do is I could move the object. So if I move this 
employee book to the two second mark and I move the manager book to the one second mark. What's going to happen is they'll be staggered but they don't appear. And the reason they don't appear is because they're not on the timeline yet. So what I want to do is I want to have them on the timeline but I want them to not animate until a certain point on the timeline. So what we're going to do is move these back. And what we're going to do is put some cue points on the timeline and then we can set the trigger to animate based on those cue points. So to create a cue point you just move your playhead and right now it's on the one second mark. So I can right click and I'll create a cue point. I'll come to the two second mark and I can right click and I can create another cue point. So now I have a cue point on the one second mark and a two second mark. So what I can do now is create a trigger where this will move not based on the timeline starting but it will move based on reaching a certain point on the timeline. So let's go ahead and do the manager one first. I'll double click on the trigger. So we're going to move the manager book on the motion path when the timeline reaches. I can type in a time or I can just go to a cue point. So when the timeline reaches cue point one. And then I'm going to modify this other trigger. So the same thing, move the employee book on this motion path when the timeline reaches cue point two. So now what we have are two slide triggers that work off of the timeline. So when it reaches these cue points these animations will happen. So let's go ahead and preview that. So the one second mark and the two second mark. So everything looks good. Now if I was done I'd go ahead and show my book here and we'll move that to the top. So let's move that to the front and then this is what our little entry screen would look like. And we're done. So that's how you animate based on the timeline. Now we'll look at how to animate based on triggers. In this activity we're going to create triggered actions to activate the motion path. So in this case we want to click a button and that will move the box either to the left or to the right. So let's go ahead and add motion paths first. So we select our shape. We go to Add Motion Path. We choose a line. And we want that line to go to the left. And we'll select our shape again and we'll add a motion path. We'll choose line. And we want this line to go to the right. So now I have two motion paths. And what we want to do is have those triggered to these shapes. So we'll go ahead and click on the first motion path. And when you double click on the motion path, we can adjust it. So we want to move the box on line motion path one. Now if you're not sure which one's which, just go ahead and select it and you'll see that you get little visual indicators. So we want to go line motion path one. When the user clicks on the left button, we hit OK. And now what we'll do is the same thing for the right button. Now here's the power of storyline. Since these triggers are basically the same, I'm just going to copy this trigger and I'm going to come to this shape and paste the trigger. And then all I need to do is change the motion path from one to two. So we'll double click on that. We'll just change it to two. We hit OK. So now we have a motion path that goes to the left and a motion path that goes to the right. Now the one thing we want to look at when you work with triggers and motion paths is when you first create that motion path, Storyline creates that move trigger. And we went ahead and added that second trigger to the box so I need to make sure I delete the extra move trigger. So I'm going to delete that. So now we have two motion paths. One motion path is going to go to the left when I click on the left button and one motion path goes to the right when I click on the right button. So let's preview this and see how this works. Click left. Everything's working. I'm going to click left again and look what happens. It's starting here in the center. I'm going to click right. Same thing. It starts in the center. The reason it's starting in the center is because that's our starting point. And this is where that relative start point comes in handy. So let's go ahead and fix this. I'm going to select our motion path. I'm going to go up to path options. We're going to choose relative start point 
and I'll select this motion path, go to Path Options, and I'll choose Relative Start Point. Now what happens with the Relative Start Point is the animation is always going to pick up with the last animation ended. So let's preview this and now everything should work exactly the way we want it to work. Click left. I click left. I click left. Click right. I click right. I click right. So you can see that I've got multiple motion paths and based on the triggers I can determine where I want those to go. So in this tutorial we learned about motion paths and we learned to time motion paths based on the timeline and we also learn to time motion paths based on a user action. And now it's your opportunity to practice this and become a motion path pro.